Hi, I'm now going to continue from the last clip I showed you all about the stance that we use in Kalar. Now if you watched all of that and understood it and enjoyed it, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this bit. Because what I'm going to do is add certain bits, certain blocks, so that you understand the system. The very basics of what it's all about. One of the things that really made me think and understand is the way Idan kind of explained the whole basic system to me. The system is military based. The system was forged on the battlefields. In Hebron, Lebanon, all the battlefields in the Middle East where these guys fought, they used this system and it worked. So if it worked there, it will work anywhere. But he's got the mindset to explain why we do certain things. And this is what I want to cover. If you can understand the mindset of why we do things in such a way, you'll understand why the system works. What you've got to understand is the units that were fighting the Golani are special forces units. So when you understand about how a special force operates, they're totally different from other regiments. What I want to explain is, and this is quite hard, because I'm a civilian, and that's all I am. So I don't pretend to be some sort of special forces guy, some military guy, I'm not. But I understand the mindset of how it's being taught. Now if I talk to you about what happened at uh, uh, Princess Gate, if you remember that situation, yeah, when the SAS stormed the Iranian embassy. Well, you know when I talked about our stance, when we talk about planning, the way Idan explains everything, when they got the call, i.e. up in Hereford, that there was a situation at Princess Gate, the police on the phone in London didn't just ring up SAS headquarters and say, hello guys, we've got a real situation down here, we've got terrorists, they've taken a building, can you come down and sort it out? They didn't all just jump into a van with a few bits of kit, roll down to London, kick the front door in and just start shooting. No, it certainly doesn't work like that. What they did was start to plan. And it takes days to work out how you're going to get in and deal with this situation. And it's a bit like us when we get attacked. But we don't have days. We've got seconds. So when I talk to you first of all about using this, this stance, yeah, the way we bring our elbows in, the way we use our hands in front, the way we bring our shoulders up and our neck down to cover us, we're using this as a planning stage. And also I like to think of this as my flat jacket, for want of a better term. You know the body armour that these guys wear, you know, they wear body armour, well, this is human body armour. I am protecting my vital organs with my arms. So as soon as I go into this stance, I am putting on my body armour. I am preparing to go into battle. So if you've got this mindset straight away, you're not being cowardly, you're being prepared. You're putting your body armour on. I've got my flak jacket on. I've got my Kevlar plates that are going to protect me. What they use today. Yeah? This is the best my body can come up with at the time. Also, I'm planning. Like they did down in the Iranian embassy siege. They planned things meticulously. But also they negotiated it wasn't just the special forces that were putting a false sense of security down. Also, the police had trained negotiators talking to the terrorists. 
telling them what they wanted to hear. And this is how Idan explains everything. So when my arms go up, and when I'm down here, I've got my flag jacket on. But I'm also listening to what the terrorist, i.e. my aggressor, wants. And I'll negotiate with him. I'll be saying, what do you want? You want my money, my money, my wallet's here. I'm going to get you my wallet. Just like they would in an actual situation. You negotiate. Yeah? And they're also planning. The longer you can take to find out what they want, put them into a false sense of security, the longer they've got to plan. So when they do attack, they are better armed. Forewarned is forearmed, as they say. So all the time I'm this, in this position and I'm negotiating, first of all, I'm using all the things that are in my body to protect myself, my adrenaline, I'm getting it now, getting my breathing right, I'm using my peripheral vision, and I'm using this to negotiate, give me time, a bit like special forces, before we go in. So this is the next part on to learning this stance. Why do we learn it? It's our flat jacket. It's our Kevlar plates in front of us. It's our negotiation time to reel the, the antagonizer to a false sense of security. It all, well, also gives me time to plan. I'm planning, I'm looking, yeah? I'm using my peripheral vision. The next thing we're going to do, so now we've planned and we're going to go in. What do, what do the special forces do? They don't just kick the front doors in and go in firing away, spraying at anything. Of course they don't. What they use is a stun grenade. They throw in a stun grenade into the environment where they know the terrorists are. And what this is designed to do is to stun, to give them a few vital seconds to get in and sort the problem out. And this is the next thing that you'll always see if you're being threatened in any of the videos. Like I say, if Idan is doing a video, if Luke is doing a video, if Matt is doing a video, you'll see them. And our stun grenade is a strike into the groin. So you'll see them in a situation where they're like this. Now in this situation, they've got their hands up, we know this stuff. So they're negotiating, they're planning, they're looking. But then they're going to go in, like special forces. And the first thing they'll do Please, no, I don't want trouble. Please, I don't want trouble. Bang! It goes in. The stun grenade is thrown in. If I do it again, watch how I drop step. These are further things that we'll learn. But I'm here. I'm passive. I'm submissive. I'm using my vision here. I'm looking from here. Please, please. No, I don't want trouble. I hate trouble. Here. Bang! The stun grenade. Could be two hits. Bang, bang! The stun grenade goes in. And then... We will normally wrap. We will capture the guy. We will hold him close. So, think about it. As, as we're negotiating, we're planning, we're looking at going into that room, and as we drop and throw in our stun grenades, we've entered the room. Boom! Boom! The stun grenades go in. This is going to get, make the guy go, Oh! Yeah? It's going to cause one, two, three seconds of him. Oh! He's going to move forwards. He's not going to go back. Yeah? His arms are going to come around. Oh! Like that. This is when we come in and rap. Basically, we're taking control of the situation. From there, we're now going to go to our main weapon. And this is where we're going to finish the person, hopefully. Main weapon, you start putting rounds in. What are our main weapons? Our knees, yeah? Elbows. So once we've wrapped, we're now emptying the magazine into the person. So can you see the whole strategy behind these basic building blocks? From here, the planning stage. From here, this is my flat jacket. I'm keeping myself safe and protected. From here, I've thrown in the stun grenade. Look how I'm protecting myself as well. Because 
You wouldn't open the front door or a door and just stand in there and throw it in. You would, you would plan a guy, you'd give him the nod, the stone grenade to go in. So again, you're protecting yourself. Bang, bang! In! Get into that room. Take control of that situation. And now start to own it. So now I'm emptying my magazine into him. Yeah? I'm using my main weapons to fire into him. Take control. And then we would take him down. Just like they would a terrorist. They would take the terrorist down. And from there, we wouldn't just go and sidle off and walk off. In Kalar, you'll see, every time when they take the person down, they then come back up to this stance. They're still scanning round for any other problems. Special Forces wouldn't just slot a guy and just walk off. Doesn't happen. What they do is they will fire, 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 put the guy down, bang, 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 and then they would come and double tap. They will shut this computer down. So when you see Dan, when you see Matt, when you see Luke, the guys go down and they will always hit to the head. They will always throw punches to the head. They're shutting the computer down. Like a special forces soldier double tapping, they will bang, bang, bang. They will double tap, triple tap to the head to make sure that computer is shut down. And they will also search for weapons around the body. You will see that every time. They will then come up and come away in this stance. So you can see now how it all falls into place. It's a military based Israeli combat system. And when you understand this, it all starts falling into place. These basic building blocks. This stance to give us time to think, to negotiate, to plan. Once we've realised what we're going to do, we throw in our stun grenades. Bang, bang! In it goes. The guy then, oh, is stunned. We come into the room. We take control of what we're doing. Boom, 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 boom. Start emptying our magazine into him. We then take him to the floor. Yeah? Bang, bang. Like a special forces soldier. Double tapping. Yeah? Into the head. Control the head. Sweep the body for any weapons. Find them. Get back up. Like a special forces soldier, he'd get back up, he would be back in. Like us, we're back up and on guard again. Weary of anything around us. So like I say, if you can understand this, you start to under understand the concepts of Kalar. Like I said, I'm not a military strategist. I'm not a military person. One eye over. Yeah? I'm not. But I understand the concept. And when you understand the concept of Kalar, it starts to fall into place. I hope you understood this. I hope you understand everything what I've said. And this is just the basics. But look how complicated in a, in a simple way it is. It isn't just a guy standing there going, oh, oh please, oh. You know? Think about the mind strategy behind it and how strong it makes you. And once you understand that, it gives you so much potential in a situation where a normal person would freeze and wouldn't do nothing. But if you're trained in Kalar and trained under the chaos of Kalar that we train in, now it starts to understand it. doesn't matter what direction you're attacked in. Yeah? If you're threatened, your hands come up. Yeah? You're planning. You're looking. Boom! The grenade goes in. Bang! Yeah? Three, four, five rounds into that person. Take them down hard. Get control. Smash, smash. Search the body for weapons and get, get back up. When you understand that, you start to understand the whole basis of Kalar. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you. But the most important thing is, keep safe out there. All the best.